Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting the Daimyo for the Turtle Clan. The Turtle Clan is the first clan I'm going to be painting all the way through. It won't be back-to-back -back episodes, but there'll be monsters and kami mixed in, but otherwise I will finish this clan before moving on to the next. Now I really like this guy, and not just because he has a lot of red and he has some dark red, which I always love, but he's just kind of a, a cool pose. He's kind of snarling a little bit, and he's like smashing his sword against the shield that's kind of raised up a little bit, and just all around a very cool guy, and I love his color choices, and I don't know if these guys, I don't think they're human, uh, because they kind of have horns and they're kind of gray-skinned, I don't know what they are. If you know, uh, like, mythologically what they are, I would love to know in the comments below. Anyway, let's get started. Alright, so right off the bat I'm going to be trimming some of the mold lines or flash here. It's not actually, uh, too bad, it's, you know, it, it's pretty straightforward, there are, you know, Coleman, you're not so great at putting these mold lines in really good places that are you know, really easy to get to. Uh, typically, they're not like right up front, but instead kind of on the side. And so you just kind of scrape them off and just kind of look. I will say that the way these miniatures are colored in the plastics, it can make it hard to see. And so, as always, if you aren't sure if you got them all, or just after priming, check again, um, and then touch up as, as needed. And it's fine to scrape off a little bit of primer. All right, so I will be priming this in gray, just a reminder of that. Okay, so now it's primed, and I'm going to start with Administratum Gray. This is going to be all over his skin, which is really just parts of the torso, front and back, and then his hands. And his face. And that's really it, and it's just like the front of his face. Now, this miniature is really, really small. Um, well, okay, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I just got done painting a giant dragon, and so <laughs> coming off of the dragon and to this guy, I thought, oh, this will be a, a welcome change. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a lot more finicky work, and uh, I am slightly out of practice. That being said, if you see, like, the straps on his his kind of back there and on his chest, they're really well-defined, and it's going to stop your brush. It's pretty hard to mess up here, uh, but you will be using a smaller brush, and it's a little bit more finicky. And uh, make sure you use brushes with a good tip. I have to change about halfway through, and I'll speak more on that later, but uh, I had to end up ordering some more miniatures, or <laughs> some more brushes. Uh, which, by the way, I do have a link below to the brushes I actually use, and so um, if you're interested in that, go ahead and click that. They're actually pretty cheap, and they're really nice brushes. Keep a point. You just got to take care of them. Uh, I've been painting heavily, as you've seen, and I've had them for quite some time since pretty much the start of this channel, so they are well worn. Next up is Known Oil, and this is going to cover all of the Administratum Grey I just painted, so just his skin here. You could have waited and uh, maybe done this later. It, you know, I, I don't typically like to follow up with a wash right away, uh, just in case the paint isn't dry, but this dried up pretty fine, so not a huge deal there. Um, I'm going to lay it on normal, but I'm not going to let it pool, so I'm going to come back and kind of wipe it up. Uh, so I'm going to keep getting it there, but then I'll, I'll touch it up afterwards. I just kind of want to, you know, dim it down uh, and, and not have it so bright. Uh, and really, I don't even highlight this up. Uh, so this is, you know, straight no no. It's not watered down, but because I touch it up a little bit, it doesn't really, you know, change too much. So it's pretty good. Next up is Mechanicus Standard Gray. This is for his hair. Uh, it, has, it will also be his tassels, but... I forget to do that, so uh, I don't know. I, I've been doing that lately. Perhaps I'm just a bad person. Not sure. But either way, uh, there's Mechanicus Standard Gray. And so, uh, you know, it, his hair is pretty easy. There is a, kind of that, you know, graduation tassel <laughs> going on up above there. But it's pretty easy to tell where the hair ends. There is one bit I do kind of miss, and that's that little strand in the middle there. Um, I'm painting that something else, but there is a strand going over it, and I'll point that out later too. I'm going to start on gray. This is back out just to add a dry brush. I'm not going to do a wash here because um, I don't want it too dark, uh, just because, you know, he's a fairly light guy, and um, if it was too dark, I, I feel like it would uh, not match the concept art well and, and be too striking. White gray is what I'm using for his eyebrows. Now, in the concept art, he has a beard and eyebrows, and here it's just eyebrows. Uh, he does not have that kind of uh, sideburn beard tuft going on in the miniature. Uh, they probably just couldn't get it to work at the detail quality they wanted, and so they omit it, and I'm fine with that. Uh, but yeah, so that's there too. And then I'm going to add it to his teeth. Now, his teeth are very, very, very small, so really I jam it in there and then try and dry out the 
inside quickly while it's still wet. And so there it is. I kind of skipped that part. Now I'm using ivory for the eyes and uh, no pupils. In fact, I believe the concept art didn't have pupils too, but I'll have to recheck. Either way, I, I do that pretty good. They're not big enough to add a pupil. It's not going to happen. So just straight up there. Burnt red. Ah, see, here's the dark reds that I absolutely love to use and will take any excuse to do so. And this is going to be on the handle of the sword. Now, the sides of this sword, and what I mean is that it's like the top and bottom of it, aren't defined on this miniature. They just kind of blend into the miniature itself. Like, you can even see at the end there, it goes right up to his, his kind of skirt there. So you just kind of have to make a line. Uh, it, you know, it, it's whatever. Also, I'm painting all of the middle tassels um, red. And so there's the one there. Then these on the back, again, you don't see the back in the concept art, so I was free to pick more red, in which case I will. So I did. <laughs> and then there's also one in the front middle section that I get off camera later on, but it's right in between his legs. Uh, and then I'm painting his uh, kind of tassel thing up there. Now, I am painting all the way to the top, but if you see the concept art, you'll notice that there's actually gold tassels hanging on the top portion. And there is a line on the miniature showing where those end, which is kind of nice. Um, however... It's not all gold, though you should still see the red behind it. So go ahead and paint it all red, and we'll add the gold later. Okay, he also has some horns, and these horns are red as well. So just be a little bit more careful here. And again, it is a little finicky where this starts and ends. Some of it is because he's not painted, so he's still all one color, and it's hard to tell detail miniatures before they're painted. Uh, so perhaps paint his hat first. Maybe that would help, but you already have the red out here, so, you know, it's whatever. All right, so I'm going to dry brush Evil Sun's Scarlet. Now, I'm going to show you one dry brush, but I actually do this a couple times to really bring out the brighter red. I don't want it quite so dark. Um, so uh, you don't want to dry brush heavy. You just want to do multiple dry brushes. If you dry brush heavy, it's going to get in the recesses. It's going to be gloppy, and it's not going to give you the effect you want. Instead, you're going to want to do a regular dry brush where it just barely gets on there. But because it's such a dark red, it really sucks up that color. And so then you're going to want to do it multiple times. Now, regular highlights like this, you can do it heavy enough to where, as you can see, it shows up with one coat. So there's one coat here. But I did dry brush about two more times. I didn't show. And then you're going to take that same evil sun's scarlet and you're going to add this to the shield to really make that red shield pop the definition here is very easy to follow and don't worry about all those little bumps it's easy enough to paint gold on top of this bright red it's not like it's going to be terrible uh so and you're going to go insane those are really tiny bumps all right moving on to the hat this is steel legion drab and this is you're going to be painting around some detail here you could cover up the detail however it's easy enough not to it's still defined enough and uh then you're not painting over color and anytime you can avoid that it's better and then he kind of has these like flaps that you have to do as well um but note that the the middle of his hat is mostly that um gold trim color and so you can avoid doing that so this is kind of the two sides this kind of <laughs> ear coverings and then the uh, kind of shoulder flaps and then it moves on into the back as well Then I'm also going to bring that color onto his chest straps. Uh, these are just a little bit lighter of a brown on these straps here, and so I just had them kind of match that hat color too. And we'll kind of unify it with a dry brush later uh, across his kind of uh, shoulder and, and uh, side armor. Next up is Rhinox Hide. This is a very, very dark brown. Uh, if, if, in fact, a table top length, it almost looks black. It, it just looks very dark because it is very dark. Uh, I never use this without a dry brush on top or some kind of highlight. You can actually highlight dry, uh, Rhinox Hide quite well just with white. I've done it before on some wood. Um, I think it was my Shield Maiden Cyclops. Her, uh, kind of the back of her shield is wood and I just actually highlighted it believe by hand even with just some white and it works out really well but it's pretty darn dark and the problem with dark colors like this is there's actually some fantastic 
texture on what I'm painting right now, these kind of uh, woven armor flaps or whatever they are, I don't know what they're called, but the impressive texture for the size of this miniature really is. Um, and it, you can't tell in this dark color. Uh, so definitely a dry brush or some kind of highlight is always recommended when using this. But otherwise it's a nice deep dark brown and a very good base color to then bring up. So I'm going to be painting all of the armor bits. So both the, the shoulders and the thighs and the back of the shield and a few other uh, tidbits which I'll mention when I get to those. But uh, you know pretty much you're going you're gonna to use a lot of this color. Okay, so you're gonna get his his kind of shoes here as well. Now there is kind of a wrapping here, and you could really make those pop, but with some hand uh, drawn highlights instead of just a dry brush. I opt not to because in the concept art it looks pretty close anyway, and I felt it'd be easy to mess up because of the shape of these boots. They kind of it's tightly woven and, and poofy material, so it's kind of inlaid. Uh, it'd be easy to get that kind of messy, so it'd be a little finicky. And I don't think you'd get a lot out of it when the dry brush already kind of helps it pop. Again, here's the back of the miniature. Now one thing I do uh, forget to paint, and I end up painting real quick off camera, is uh, the kind of handle he's holding it on. I do paint that in Stormhost Silver, so FYI, after this dries you can totally paint it there. Alright, and also his belt is going to get the same treatment. So I'm a little finicky here, right there you saw me pause, that's just me making double sure, yeah this is the color I wanted. I plan out my paints ahead of time, uh, and that's what I post in the description below. So by the way, there is a paint list in the description of every one of my, uh, at least later videos. Uh, so check out the description if you want kind of a, a list of paints I use and where I use them, I list both. Okay, so Steel Legion Drab again, and this is to add that dry brush. I'm going to do another dry brush off camera, but it's the same one as this one. Um, so. You know, just do this twice. Now, you will note I'm not just going one direction. I'm kind of going every direction. So see this one, I'm going down, and then I'm going to go to the side. I'm just trying to get all those raised edges to really make that texture pop. You will notice, by the way, there's a slight um, loss of texture on that one. It's because there was a mold line that went across that. A little unfortunate, but not, not terrible, not noticeable. Okay, this is the same as a fire dragon, so it's three parts buff to one part brass, and this is this kind of just slightly metallic kind of tannish color. Uh, it's mostly brass, or sorry, it's mostly buff. It's a little bit of metallic paint mixed in, and it's slightly darker. And I'm just slightly painting the tops of these. I'm not worried about getting the sides. Um, if you want to try that, more power to you. Uh, I am not going to do that. I don't need that in my life. And also notice I am not being too careful, it's easy enough to paint the red around it, in fact it's very easy to do that, um, though if you paint the sides you're going to have to be a lot, a lot more careful. And this is going to be the trim of pretty much all of his armor, or just his armor in general, especially on his chest and on his, his kind of hand there. Now this did need two coats, I don't know if it's because I had it maybe slightly more watery or what, but I had to do two coats on the fire dragon as well. So just, you know, be patient, take your time. Uh, there's a little bit of finicky detail like on this handle here, and then again on his helmet. Uh, you can use the side of the brush. They are fairly raised, they're just really skinny and tiny. 
Um, and if your paint is too wet, it's just gonna glob over it. So it can't be too wet, at least for those. Now right here there's these kind of um, parts that are attached to the belt that are then connecting his armor. And I went ahead and painted these in this same armor trim. I could have done this in Stormhost Silver for a, a more silver color. I could have done this as just a lighter leather as if they're leather. You can't see this in concept art. Use whatever you like. Make them purple. It doesn't matter. I also paint the little um, kind of rings on the back of this color, the way I paint the rings on the shield silver. Uh, you can do both. And there's that little, this is the bit that's holding up his little tassel above his head. Again, there is a, a little bit of uh, hair there that I just end up painting. As you can see, I've now given up on my other's uh, brushes and I'm using this older Citadel small basing brush, uh, layer brush, I apologize. Um, it doesn't hold a tip nearly as well either. This was one of my first sets of brushes. And it wasn't used heavily, but I also didn't have any clean or anything like that to really take care of it. So, you know, uh, I was working with uh, inefficient tools, and that excuse will come up later. Anyway, Reichland Flesh Shade. This is one of the few shades I am using besides Nolan Oil, really. This is just on his hat, and then I'm also going to water it down. So this is now watered down, and I'm bringing just a tiny bit around the rim of the shield. And this adds a very good... Um, it makes it look the shield more look more round and slightly slightly weathered It just makes it look a little bit more realistic And I don't make the it even as you can see now I'm kind of bringing it out just ever so slightly and then once it dries again I'll add another little bit just to darken that very rim a tiny bit more Okay, black red and even darker red and I love this one too. This is going to be on his arm guard here It's a very very dark red. So it's essentially black with a hint of red here. It actually looks brighter wet I feel than a than dry, which is typical, I suppose, but I really like this red, and uh, yeah, it's an excuse to use it. It also goes a little bit around his, his kind of glove there, and uh, I'm also going to use that trim on the kind of dagger handle he has there. Now I'm taking that Reichland Flesh shade, again watered down, and then just put ever so slightly in all of his armor trim. So anywhere you put that buff and brass mixture, I'm now putting Reichland Flesh shade on it. Moving on to light orange, this is something I had to buy the moment I knew I was buying Rising Sun because I knew I wanted to paint the turtle people because they're turtle people. And this is a very bright orange that needs a couple of layers on even this gray prime here. Uh, and this is just for his out the top layer of his outside skirt. Now, when I say outside skirt, I do miss it a, a little bit. The On the front, right out in front of his legs where his boots start, that is also orange. You'll see me paint it a little bit later. I'm not gonna swap in order, so just learn from my mistakes and don't paint the inside like I just did. That's that's stupid too. Um, don't be stupid like me. Be be smart. Learn from my mistakes. Now I was a little afraid to do this, you know, uh, 
after all of this, just because I have this all painted, but I had zero problem. Everything is defined enough and detailed enough on this miniature where you can paint it, even with this crappy brush of mine, uh, very easily. There's also a little bit overhanging here, and again, it melds right into the dagger. You just kind of have to create a line there and do your best. Uh, not the dagger, so much the, the handle to his sword. Moving on up to Mechanicus Standard Gray, and this is just because I didn't paint the tassels on his the very front, uh, and I forgot the tassels on the side of the shield. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and paint those. It's hard to see here, it's hard to see really anywhere, but once you start getting paint on it, then you can tell where it stops and ends, so not too bad. And they're going to get the same Administratum Gray dry brush. Okay, next up is Emerald. Again, another color I had to buy. This is for just his kind of very innermost front of his uh, skirts here. And uh, these are pretty cool. Now, in the in the concept art, pretty much every fabric these clan members have has a some kind of design on it. I do not suggest doing that unless you're way better than I am, in which case I hope you're only watching this for entertainment values because then you can like laugh at me or something. Um, there will be some detail I paint later on, spoiler alert, uh, and I'll talk more about that later. However, I did not opt to do the very fine detail here. Uh, I'm not going to hand paint that. If the texture was there, I would have. Okay, this is me forgetting that I need to add those little bits in the front that are also light orange. Okay, now this is just at stating that I added a little bit of white to actually get a highlight. And so this is that same buff brass mixture just with a tiny bit of white. And I'm talking, you know, 10% of whatever volume you have at the max. And then watered down, obviously, uh, as you show with all your highlights. And this is just kind of a, a tracing here. It's not too bad, you know. So uh, anywhere there's a texture on the top of the kind of, you know, bell or tassel holder there. And then just on all the lines. All right, now again, using that same kind of white technique, I'm adding a little bit of a highlight to this orange. This is just to give some definition to the folds that would otherwise kind of blend into the eye, especially from far away. And then also a little bit of an outline where his skirts are kind of flared up and turned. And so right where it, it ends there, I'm adding, I'm adding a highlight there just to add some definition to that shape. Alright, and I'm adding a tiny bit to the emerald. However, the emerald is already quite bright. Uh, I could have probably done another highlight here, but it's also very minor because it's such a small part of the miniature. Um, yeah, I think in hindsight I would add another layer of highlights here just to really make perhaps pop. Okay, pastel blue. This is the inner portion of his outside skirt. Now there isn't always necessarily a very crisp line. There is a very much a difference in, you know, when it folds over to the orange, but it's not necessarily crisp to where it would stop paint from running over the edge. So just be very careful when painting this to make sure that you don't spill it to the top of the orange, especially considering you already highlighted it. Or maybe paint this before you highlight it and then you don't quite have to worry as much as me. So there you go. Lesson learned.
Okay, now again I'm going to add a little bit of white for a tiny bit of a highlight. I'm just going to highlight a few parts here. Most of it is in shadow, but some of it is flared up here, which is nice because then you can actually see it. Nobody's going to turn a miniature upside down very often, and so you won't see a lot of it, but that flared up part you kind of will. All right, next up, Burnt Red. I forgot to do his other arm guard. Now, I didn't do the Black Red, I did the Burnt Red. I debated on whether to do both the same, um, but they are different materials, I believe, because this one has some stitching I did not see on the other one. So I'm gonna add some Steel Legion Drab and just do a little line for those two stitches where the leather kind of meets and call that a day. Now, onto Stormhost Silver. I'm gonna cover his whole blade in this. Again, very quick and easy. While you have this out, go ahead and flip it to the back of his shield and draw in those uh, rings for those tassels and hit the handle. Alright, bringing out the Nuln Oil again. This is just to quickly darken up that silver just ever so slightly so I can add some highlights quite easily. Necron Compound. This is a silver dry brush material. It's a very goopy paint and meant just for dry brushing. And it's just a very quick and easy way to um, add some scuff marks and some shine to the silver. Next up is Castellan Green. So these are the Turtle Clan, so I'm going to be adding some green. I'm going to be adding grass anyway. And so I'm going to go ahead and paint the whole base green. I'm using a small brush at first to paint around the feet so I don't mess it up. And then I'll switch to a larger brush to paint in the rest. Alright, then I'm also going to paint the rim, this castle in green as well, and it will require two coats. I'm not going to add two coats to the top though. Abaddon Black. Okay, so I do a poker chip style here. Um, so I don't want to add the rim because I've painted the base now, but this needs to show a few things. It needs to show that it's green, so it's a turtle clan, and it needs to show black because it's a daimyo. I'll get more on that later, but it's, it's kind of odd. So here's the purity seal. I'm going to go ahead and varnish it now because I'm an idiot. Okay, so I've varnished it, now I'm adding some Tester's Gloss Coat Brush on Varnish. This is just to add a little bit of sheen or shine to anything that should be metallic because the matte will take away pretty much all reflective material, um, which makes it look like it's not painted, which is nice, but I want the armor to kind of sh be shiny. And now it'll be shiny when the rest of him is not, which is kind of nice. Alright, so I watered down some glue here. This is just some regular PVA Elmer's glue, and I'm brushing it onto the top here, making sure it's fairly thick, but again, it's also kind of watered down. But it's it's not going to hold anything heavy uh, right now, so there's not too much harm here. Now, this is slightly off camera. I do apologize for that, but I'll explain it. So I have this Citadel grass, and I'm just grabbing a clump of it between my fingers and moving my fingers back and forth to make it fall onto the glue. Then I dipped the uh, rocks in some solid glue and stuck those down on top. You could do this before, but you might end up with kind of some uh, area around it that doesn't have grass in which you have to place it. This isn't too bad. Afterwards, I just brush on a little bit of glue on the bottom and they're perfectly secure. Okay, so I'm not happy with the poker chip. So what I'm going to do now, because it's not noticeable from table distance, is I'm going to paint in between every other one. So it's kind of checkerboard. Also, I also think it's kind of like a turtle, which is kind of cool. Okay, and here's the finished miniature. This is what I ended up with. Uh, never mind. Okay, just kidding. Mechanic is standard gray. Let's go ahead and go all in. I was not going to do this before, and I still kind of wish I didn't. This has been... So, again, I don't have the right brush for this. It's a very thick brush, so it's holding a lot more paint than I would want. Uh, it's a little too watery. The tip is still fairly thick. It doesn't come to nearly the point I would want it to. I'd use a much smaller brush normally. Um... So yeah, I end up having to really play around with this. It looks great from table distance. I think it looks good in the end. That one right there was terrible. So I erase that. Now erasing that means repainting on the orange, then highlighting it back up, and then trying it over again. And then realizing that's still not good and fixing it again. I also go around the edges 
of the circle and make it a little bit more defined. So what you're seeing here is only a tiny portion of the effort I put into here. I eventually just walked away from the miniature and came back the next day when I had cooled off a little bit. It, you know, at your own risk do this. <laughs> and if you do, use a better brush. And that's where I mess up. That right there, uh, I'm done. But you know what guys, this is it. This is the final miniature. This is how he looks like right now on my desk in front of me because I haven't put him back in the box. Guys, I really hope you did enjoy this one. I got a little frustrated at the end, but otherwise I loved every moment of painting him. I thought he was great. I love his style and his design, how his foot's up. I liked actually basing him and trying to come up with a way to make it still work as a game piece so you know that he is a turtle daimyo. I'd also like to thank all of my patrons, especially Peter who is listed up here because he is backing at $10. That means he gets special giveaways with really nice miniatures on top of my larger giveaways I give to all of my patrons for reaching goals. In fact, one of them is coming up because we hit $10 and I'm halfway towards the second one. That means I will be giving away two to three miniatures here real soon. So if you are interested in that and also just want to support the channel, go and head over to Patreon. There is a link in the description below where you can see that on my channel page. Either way, guys, backing or not, I always appreciate your views, your kindness, your feedback, your suggestions, and just your words of encouragement. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below on what you thought of this miniature and the detail work, and maybe what you think I should paint next. So that's it, guys, for this video. I'll talk to you again real soon.